as discussed in the last lecture, we will be now looking at the implementation of Grover's algorithm by using optical techniques. In particular, we will be looking at using laser cavity as a Grover search algorithm implementation. Now, this particular work is based on what Grover proposed in 1997 in his PRL, where uh, he formulated the idea of the Grover search algorithm, which gets the advantage when you are looking at searching an unsorted database. It is like trying to find someone's phone number in the phone book, when all we have is that person's phone number. Now, this is as bad as finding a needle in a haystack as uh, Grover defines it um, and it can be mathematically formulated as a problem where given a binary oracle function f of x, the function would essentially be getting a value of 1 when the right function is there. Otherwise, when the right answer is not there, if x is not equal to w, then it will always give 0. So, the task in this case is to find the value of w. Now, if somebody has to do it in the brute force or the classical approach, then every particular value um, has to be computed uh, at least half time, right? Uh, unless the f of w which gives rise to 1 is found. So, it goes on an average n over 2 calls or queries are required to the function to find the value of w. So, uh, that is the classical approach and what he was able to show was that if the quantum oracle is used, then it can be done in root n approaches and that is something which we have discussed earlier in terms of plain Grover's algorithm. Now, in terms of implementation by this group in which came out in 2002 by using classical Fourier optics in terms of using a laser, uh, they were able to do an experiment um, of the Grover's quantum search algorithm showing that classical waves can search an a n item database as efficiently as quantum mechanics and uh, the transverse beam profile of the short laser pulse is processed iteratively as the pulse bounces back and forth between the two mirrors of the laser. Uh, so, they directly observed the sort item and was able to find that in roughly root n iterations in the form of growing intensity peak of this profile, that was precisely the way how uh, Grover had predicted in his uh, uh, original paper in 1997. However, in this case as expected due to the lack of quantum entanglement, the size of the database gets limited. The results uh, were sh showing that the entanglement is however, not necessary for the algorithm itself uh, nor for its efficiency except that the size of the database is something which gets limited as a result of this uh, quantum aspect being missing. But this was a very important uh, demonstration of Grover's algorithm uh, by using classical Fourier optics and let us look at it in some detail. The um, principle which was available in this particular case which is the uh, superposition, it is a wave phenomena and that is a quantum parallelism which exists in uh, both the cases and uh, it also has the interference phenomena which are wave phenomena. However, entanglement, non-locality and quantum measurements, these specific applications need them which were not present in the um, wave phenomena. So, for quantum information processing as was shown by Seth Lloyd in uh, 1999, it was understood that there are certain problems which can be done without using entanglement and he had already shown that it was uh, possible to show quantum search without entanglement. And uh, so, in that sense, uh, this particular approach of classical waves or Fourier optics to use in terms of quantum search of Grover is an interesting uh, 
example. So, uh, Seth Lloyd had presented it in 99 that the entanglement of quantum variables which is usually thought to be the prerequisite for obtaining quantum speed ups of information processing tasks uh, such as searching databases um, and he was able to show that uh, there were methods for quantum search that gives speed up over classical methods, but does not require entanglement. And these methods rely instead on interference to provide speed up. Search without entanglement comes at a cost and that was the critical point that he mentioned at that time. Although they were outperforming the analogous classical devices, the quantum devices that perform the search are not universal quantum computers and as such they require exponentially greater overhead than a quantum computer that operates using entanglement. So, in, in that sense quantum search without entanglement is compared to classical search using waves and that was what he had suggested in um, 1999 theoretically and had mentioned that it would require exponentially greater overhead than a quantum computer. And that is the part which uh, in this particular implementation using waves inside the laser um, had the issues to do with the search in terms of the size of the problem set that could be looked at. However, the principle mentioned here does work and that was very interesting. So, the idea in this entire process has had been the principle of amplification of the signal that is being sought after. So, if uh, there is a set where uh, the answer essentially exists, uh, but uh, what Grover was able to point out was that by using the oracular search approach, it was possible to amplify the signal and as such be able to look at it efficiently and um, point to it uh, as a result of this process. And so, this repeated questioning um, in a way would work when the amplification is um, happening every time the question essentially um, is being answered. So, this amplitude amplification is a critical step in the Grover's algorithm and in fact, in some sense it is the kernel of the Grover's search algorithm. The important part of the quantum search algorithm therefore, relies on the fact that uh, the database item is being transformed into the basis set in the Hilbert space, wherein an unitary operation is being performed, which um, sort of sets up the pace of this problem in terms of phase flipping. And uh, so, this is a unitary operator which does that. So, the first step as always required for a quantum uh, implementation process is to initialize the register a quantum register, then the oracle uh, performs a selective phase shift uh, of the target state and that is the kind of processing which sort of is essential uh, in terms of having an appropriate oracle which recognizes the solution, but does not know the answer. So, in some in that sense basically the oracles unitary operation keeps on amplifying it. Uh, through uh, selective phase shift operations. Um, and uh, so, uh, this unitary operation which is being applied to the, the quantum register which has been loaded with the data uh, gives rise to uh, this marked state, uh, which can then undergo an inversion, wherein the all the amplitudes above about the average is being rotated or inverted. So, all the amplitudes about the average gets inverted uh, in by the application of the uh, unitary um, invert operator. And this entire process is been applied. So, this step 2 and 3 is repeatedly applied or uh, iterated in such a way that it on an average requires root and steps to get to the answer. So, the readout of the measure 
the register is found to be in the state with probability almost equivalent to unity in terms of the right state that is the mark state which is the target state which was being looked for. So, in graphical sense this is what Grover showed in his 97 paper is that these amplitudes in the register are given the phase shift in such a way that the, the mark state is uh, uh, undergoes a transform inversion about the average then flips it back up to a point where it gets amplified and this is uh, this undergoes phase shift uh, and is being repeated uh, root n times to until the measure is done and the iterated amplitude amplification results as a result of this process. So, this is the uh, essence of the Grover's algorithm graphically. Um, there have been many previous experiments as uh, we have also discussed uh, earlier which b is based on the NMR process that we looked at. Um, we have been discussing about the classical approach uh, optics approaches, but uh, I would not really exactly discuss the Paul Quaid's approach uh, that was shown in 2000, the year 2000 which we will uh, next look up in the future lecture and uh, which also involves classical optics and once again the scalability depends on the elements that we talk about. Uh, the number of storage and retrieval requires single query and uh, there is no inversion about average and uh, there have been um, also other ways of looking at it that is uh, which has been done by uh, the uh, Phil Buxbaum and his group and et al uh, in 2000 where they were able to uh, populate Rydberg wave packets with the states and uh, and th they also had the same problem of the number of states uh, which could be addressed and there the marked or the encoded state was possible to be measured also as per Grover's terms by using the Rydberg wave packet uh, states that were written and then looked at in the Grover sense of root 8, but again the uh, number of qubits that could be uh, utilized in that process was also very, very limited uh, precisely n equal to 8. Uh, in this particular approach of using a laser and to do this algorithm, um, it uses classical optics once again that you, the entire algorithm is through classical optics. It is uh, again undergoes the inversion about average, it goes the multiple inquiries and iterations confirming the same process and as far as the particular principle was being demonstrated in the year 2001, uh, it had 32 elements that could be encoded for doing this. Um, although in 2001 some more work by using classical optics showed that could be there can be other studies of classical optics which can take the number of encoding states to about 50. So, ongoing efforts are there in this Grover search uh, methods and all these has been um, attempted in different ways. The 2000 approach of Kuwait et al um, is actually shown here in brief, I mentioned I will be uh, doing it in the next lecture, but uh, it is no, it is not necessary, I will actually explain it here itself, where um, what was done was they used a uh, halfway plate and a beam splitter and polarizers uh, to sort of utilize this principle of uh, linear optics to encode and decode and search the encoding of the states that were being looked at and look for the database. Uh, so, this uh, P c here is the Pockel cell and L c is the liquid crystal and Q r is the quarter, uh, quarter wave retarder and this is the oracle which works which is being used um, in terms of marking. So, uh, quarter wave retarder essentially sets the uh, particular state which is uh, marked through this iterative state um, of rotation which enables it to 
being thrown out if it is being uh, the mark state. And so, this is how it operates you have the uh, light enter um, with 2 qubits uh, encoded through this uh, half wave plate which uh, undergoes this uh, interferometric pathways of the beam being split by beam splitter into the um, different uh, pathways. This is the oracle which is being looked at where the light beam uh, is following two pathways, one where it has been displaced and the other where it has not been displaced. Now, the displaced part is the one where it actually uh, goes through the other path and is being uh, trapped to get to the information that you would like to have. And uh, these are the basic points which are being shown here. So, this is the 50-50 beam splitter. Uh, the polarizing beam splitters are sitting here and here in terms of uh, this. Uh, and there are these halfway plates which are at different angles. Uh, of them as 22.5 means it will essentially act like a quarter wave plate and the other half wave plate at 45 degrees uh, is being used. So, in one case uh, double pass of that will act like a half wave plate otherwise it will be a single pass. And uh, so, they would give rise to pi by 2 phase shift, pi phase shift and uh, pi over uh, pi v phase shifts depending on their rotation axis that they undergo. And so, with this n equal to 2, 2 qubits that came in, it was possible to search for the uh, pathway. Now, um, in this process, the biggest problem, this is a thought experiment, which was thought of doing here. And uh, although in principle, uh, the number of qubits can go up higher, it gets uh, complicated, because the components uh, at every point needs to have more and more of these uh, individual um, uh, beam splitters and interferometers, which are being put through with multiple oracles doing the same bits of job in each of these to finally give rise to the qubits that we are looking at. And so, in this process, it was estimated that it could be scaled up to a certain number, which theoretically can go up to a certain value. But as you can see, the components, number of components grows exponentially with the number of qubits that was being implemented. And in this sense, the classical approach uh, of quantum computing in this process is uh, very, very limited, because of the exponential growth of the resources necessary for this. On the other hand, the process which has been implemented uh, as discussed by this particular paper in 2001, um, by using a laser cavity is much more efficient, because what it does is it uses a notch filter in in a plate, which is a phase imprint, notch phase imprint, which has been put right next to the uh, high reflector of a laser cavity, um, such that. Um, so, this is the high reflector, so it is a almost 100 percent reflective, but there is this phase imprint, which has been inputted right at that point, where uh, that. Um, is the one whose Fourier domain point. So, one of them, the one at the at the one which is right next to the high reflector acts like the oracle plate and the one at the Fourier plane uh, does the uh, phase imprint in its Fourier domain and uh, it, it is been uh, looked at in two different ways. One, when it is the uh, marked state, where it actually focuses, goes through a different geometry to the next mirror. And so, out comes the pattern at one point, which is being amplified as it undergoes through the number of iterations. Um, so, it is a 4 f geometry, where the uh, amplification process occurs and this is a 13 and a half nanosecond time repetition per iteration that is being taken care, which is being doing it in this process. The data register thus is continuous in its uh, x coordinate and the iterated phase contrast imaging is what is being applied to use this. So, the is 4 f geometry uh, 
uh, amplification scheme uh, in the optics approach uh, works out very nicely because the plate which is been phase imprint uh, plate which has been used is also essentially the uh, path where the process can go through the amplification process. So, a laser um, which is having say 300 picosecond pulse width at 532 nanometer say YAG laser which is being put through this uh, cavity where um, these uh, phase plate in its uh, Fourier are put together at the f and at 2 f points uh, in with respect to the lens to give rise to this uh, phase amplification scheme which undergoes this uh, iteration and uh, under the condition that there is a 13.5 nanosecond time lag uh, between the iteration is enough to have no interactions between them. So, the it is a continuous data register in the along the x dimension which is the dimension where the pulse is being inputted through the mirror and uh, in the spatial domain therefore, this phase input acts as the amplifier point which is being marked out as it goes through the iteration order. So, the quantum search in this particular approach is being mapped uh, by using a qubit data register uh, in the optics domain by using a continuous uh, coordinate in the x dimension. Um, the probability amplitudes are then correspondingly the complex electric field amplitudes in the, in the transverse laser beam profile. So, this is the uh, transverse electromagnetic mode T E M mode of the laser beam which is being played around with the coordinate space which is undergoing a phase change depending on the notch which has been provided in the spatial domain of the phase which continually operates by using the uh, optical geometry which has been iteratively gone through. So, the oracle in this case therefore, acts in terms of the local phase imprint which has been inputted through the, the phase, phase notch that has been shown at the uh, input mirror or the high reflector end of the laser cavity which has been utilized for this process as shown in the uh, figure here. Uh, that is the phase notch which is a oracle plate that has been used and uh, the inversion about the average is being done through the phase input the analogous one in the Fourier plane um, which uh, is able to undergo the same Fourier input because of the uh, phase imprint which is there in the Fourier domain. So, once again in the Fourier domain this phase plate essentially is the same job as the inversion about the average. So, the number of iterations therefore, depends is given by the round trips in an all optical cavity uh, which is where this uh, whole work is being done. So, the phase contrast imaging inside the cavity is the way this particular approach of quantum data processing has been done to reach the Grover's limit. So, the uh, operators can in this case can be broken down into the bitwise uh, walsh -Almud, walsh -Almud operation and the um, and the particular uh, operation essentially performs a selective phase shift on the state input which is the 0 state. Um, and we therefore, in this case therefore, it is the replacement is happening by the, the bitwise wall shadow mode is being replaced by a Fourier transform which is essentially a single lens in this particular approach. So, the single lens here essentially acts like the wall shadow mode operator. So, the wall shadow mode operator is being uh, re replaced by the Fourier transform element which in this case is essentially the single lens. So, the analogy to the original work is 100 percent there except that this is a this is a physical device in this optical domain which essentially 
limits back to the same operation which is uh, achieved through the Wiles Hadamard gate. So, in, in terms of the bare cavity where there is uh, no data which has been inputted in terms of the phase mask, um, there would be no enhancement happening. So, it will always be a no for an answer. However, when uh, a photodiode behind a detector slit is placed in the image of the oracle line, then there will be amplification corresponding to the marked or the target bit, which can then be looked at and uh, that is how the solution appears. Um, it depends on, it, it essentially goes through the iteration bits, the scanning slit to the map out of the beam profile shows the iterative measurement, which is going on for uh, the number of round trips. The data can be corrected for the optical losses and the solution can be watched to grow as well as to shrink depending on the number of iterations which are being performed. The peak of the actual result is expected after roughly pi over 4 times root n iterations and the, the number of iteration is generally decided by um, the beam diameter over the oracle width. The oracle width is essentially the notch filter which is being provided in the, uh, the phase notch filter which is being provided in the spatial domain. So, uh, given the oracle line width uh, as we just mentioned, uh, when it is as short as uh, 42 microns to when it is about 126 micron, uh, the results seem to follow a similar uh, kind of principles and it is possible to get the same kind of results depending on uh, the number of iterations given the understanding that the uh, number is being defined as we just discussed in the last slide, uh, which is the beam diameter over the oracle width, which is now for a fixed beam diameter oracle width has been changed and so the number keeps on changing. Now, by using, so the critical question therefore, comes as to how many times by using this particular approach that we just defined, the iterations will peak at, at every i and will invert at that many root i's. So, given the oracle width of different kinds, so the experimentally the beam diameter of this were also, uh, the ratio was found to be that that is roughly the n value, which is what is being looked at. The number of uh, iterations to peak would be the ones which are uh, roughly the root n here. So, based on that the inferred um, n for each of these operations were pretty close to the experimental data. So, this 32 is with respect to 31.7, 15.8 is roughly exactly the same, 11.6 and 10.6. So, uh, this is in good agreement and confirms that the root n scaling behavior. So, we were using this particular formula to generate all these values and uh, however, the some of the parts which were somewhat arbitrary is the has been in this particular case the choice of the beam diameter which was set to be 1.33 millimeters, the choice of the uh, oracle width which was the central part of the trapezoid which was been etched onto was also sort of uh, arbitrary in terms of finding these. But Having said that, the agreement was essentially extremely good in terms of getting these results. So, in some sense, the simulation of the results for this particular case uh, would be confirming what had been attempted in terms of the experimentation, and in that sense, it would be essential to have a model in which the input beam with its x axis being defined is going through a setup. 4F setup in the same geometry as we have discussed. We initialize the Gaussian beam profile E of x. The oracle in this case and theoretically would be the imprint or the trapezoidal phase profile of a certain exponential. So, in this case uh, exponential i phi naught of x. Uh, 
gives rise to this kind of a trapezoid function and uh, use a lens to perform Fourier transform is a focal mass to imprint the trapezoid phase profile and again use another lens to perform the second Fourier transform to bring back to the uh, normal plane and then keep iterating this with this uh, functional form and what it would be found is that the squares would appear because the phase imprints are used in the double pass. So, that is uh, because the actual results would uh, uh, essentially have the squares because the phase imprints were used in double pass in both the cases of uh, these uh, process. So, instead of having one interaction they were always having double interaction. So, the operator was acted upon twice and that is why the iterations were in terms of squares. So, when this was compared with the measurements the simulations were uh, in quite good agreement and um, it was found that the process as discussed um, through the experimental process uh, sort of remained uh, similar to what was expected. And the idea was that uh, even if the iterations involved required finding the uh, values which were not uh, as clear cut in the experimental case like you were pushing the limits and you were trying to find it at positions which were not having enough photons. Uh, even then the preliminary conclusions were uh, were thought of as to item was even found beyond Philip the half max the qualitative change of the oscillations were there. And so, in some sense some more work was being thought of being required. However, uh, it was in pretty good agreement in terms of the actual signal that was being looked at the the part which uh, created a little bit of a problem was this region where some sort of a uh, qualitative change in the oscillating feature came in terms of these uh, simulated results versus the other fact being that there was some aspect of this noise and these other things which came on and uh, the item was uh, being found even beyond the full width at half max which remained like a little bit of a questionable parameter when it was done in theory. However, one thing to note here is that uh, since the qualitative features of the results were still maintained the uh, theory behind this remained quite good. The idea understanding were much more un uh, realistic when it was thought or understood that the imprinted phases were not exactly pi by 2 in the real sense of the experiment. Uh, the experiment obeys the phase matching condition um, uh, instead of uh, having arbitrary uh, cases where they were uh, having different levels. The cross checking essentially meant that the opposite phase shifts for the oracle and the focal line were in the same pathway and that uh, created um, a better approach where it was possible to see how this uh, signal interaction worked out. So, uh, theoretically it was therefore, possible to even go a little bit further, um, but I think uh, most important take home message was the fact that uh, the principle of the Grover's algorithm was met with irrespective of how the experiment uh, design was being looked at. So, now the question which came immediately was the scalability and the resource use. Um, so, if you look at a beam profile it uh, roughly in the x y plane it looks like this where uh, we are basically using a grid pattern to figure out where can we put in the notch in the phase front which would essentially encode the data in it. Uh, so, in some sense resources has to be a classical database irrespective of whether or how you can search it and that is sort of imprinted on the beam profile that has been looked at. Um, so, the oracle width limit is uh, going, uh, is going to go, go down to the diffraction limit and that is in terms of roughly 10 microns or so. Is if it goes below that then uh, it will not be possible to distinguish between the notches which are uh, right next to each other. Uh, 
um, that uh, so by using a beam diameter of about say 1 centimeter, um, although it was a much smaller beam diameter that was being actually practically used um, and by using two transverse dimensions or uh, about roughly 20 equivalents um, of qubits were being talked about in this particular approach, um, because the, the distance over which the, the measurement and the other processes was being done had to be uh, respect with respect to the diameter of the beam and in that regard the beam divergence became an issue uh, as well as the signal intensity, because as it went through further and further in this entire process of uh, going through the system, uh, there were losses in the optical process which had to be also encountered. So, the resources needed to search the database uh, required the iteration time for the quantum of the wave search was sort of alike which was very important. Um, in typical sense single photon energy would suffice in principle, however, for measurement purposes and to get beyond the um, beyond the noise limits, this number had to be substantial so that it can be measured. And the optical components the wave searching is quite efficient, the Fourier transform using a single lens and that is why which is and that is independent of n that really helps this whole process. So, um, certain um, certain number in principle could be attempted which could go for say how large of a beam diameter which could be used. So, for example, the uh, size of universe or if you were going to see at a distance which could be of a certain uh, cases, but the scalability in some sense is extremely poor because even if you take um, a size which is as large as the universe size, it only results in 206 equivalent qubits, whereas um, in some sense getting up to uh, 1 centimeter diameter which is also a pretty large case, uh, but it is doable is uh, we are talking in terms of 20 equivalent qubits. So, it is only a scaling factor of 10 which would demand it to grow to a huge um, size factor and therefore, uh, it is it is something which is uh, becomes very difficult. So, for instance, uh, talking in terms of numbers this is also extremely difficult to reach which is 10 to about 31 iterations and this is not possible to uh, do in terms of scalability. So, in some sense the scalability of this is an issue, uh, however it is kind of cute uh, as to how it is possible to completely uh, picturize this entire process of Grover search by mapping an optical beam, optical uh, profile, profilometer in some sense and writing out the information on a laser beam of light and then putting it through a Fourier device to get the result. Um, uh, and up to some 10 to 20 equivalents of qubits, though it might look reasonable, it just scales terribly beyond that. So, the, uh, the idea of being able to show Grover's algorithm work entirely with wave optics is quite impressive and uh, in some sense uh, numbers in the range of 11, 16, 32 items confirming root n scalability has been shown. And uh, in principle, it is scalable up to 10 to the power 6 items. Um, the lack of entanglement limits the size of the database to a large extent. Uh, the wave searching is in fact as efficient as the quantum searching and there is no need for the tensor product wise structure of Hilbert space single lens instead of bit wide Hadamard does the job and that is a huge uh, advantage in terms of welch halmerd uh, welch hadamard gates that are necessary f in other approaches here just using a, a lens for a fourier fourier transform becomes very effective and it can experimentally investigate uh, perhaps some aspects of quantum counting multiple search items phase matching noise and fault tolerance and this was reported in the prl as mentioned below in year 2002 sorry I think I mentioned 2001 earlier. Um, and with this I am um, going to end today's lecture, where we have basically shown you how to look at classical optical approaches.
uh, either in terms of a laser which has been spatially encoded or which has been put through uh, beam splitters and polarizers to be able to do as important jobs of uh, global search. The only problem that ends up in all these approaches, although the laser part was much better than the plain uh, linear optics approach, um, the scalability was definitely much better than the linear optics method, but yet it still suffered um, from the linear, uh, fr from the scalability approach. Um, but either way, uh, we have managed to show that it is possible to show uh, Grover's algorithms effectiveness and efficiency even in these classical routes by using superposition alone. However, if it needs to go further in terms of Shor's algorithm, this is not what is going to happen anymore. So, there some other approaches will be needed and we will take up on these things later. Um, as far as uh, the next part of this, rest part of this week is concerned, I think we will be looking at um, the problem set solutions um, in the time if we have left in this week uh, for the questions that uh, has been asked over the forum for clarifications which we can perhaps do here in the little bit of time that is left over in this week. And with that I am going to end today's lecture. Thank you. Thank you.